Hi, my name's John Godfrey, and I want to share with you today a verse from the first letter of John, chapter 1, of walking with God. And in verse 7, we read this. He that walks in the light, as he is in the light, shall have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ shall cleanse us from our sins. If we walk in the light. Light is a very important thing. And I want you to, just for a moment, imagine you are in a theatre. The lights go down. It goes very dark. Curtains open. The artist step, steps out onto the stage. And the spotlight comes onto him. And he's illuminated by that spotlight so all can see who he is, what he is doing. And that's a little bit like us when we come into the spotlight of God. John tells us that the world lies in darkness and in wickedness. Jesus tells us that men prefer to worship darkness because their deeds are evil. The world is like the theatre in total darkness. And as we step out of that darkness into God's light, we become visible. We become illuminated by the very presence and the holiness of God. We can be seen for what we are and who we are. We can be seen by the very clothes, as it were, spiritually, that we are wearing. If you have an artist that comes onto the stage dressed as a clown, in all the clown's makeup, in all the arraignment, you don't take that person seriously. If, on the other hand, the actor wants to be taking part in a role, then he dresses in a costume that depicts the stage of that role and so encourages us to believe in what he is saying through the way that he is dressed. When the spotlight of God falls upon us, as we enter out of that darkness into that light, we should become changed. For if we come into God's spotlight in our own righteousness, full of self, we come as Isaiah reminds us in our filthy rags. We are seen for what we are. And this is the truth of God's light. It shows us for what we are. It shows us in all our splendor, in all our glory, in all our weakness and in all our faults. As the spotlight of God shines upon us, so it depicts the nature that we have entered the presence of God in. In Zechariah, <clears throat> there the high priest at the time, Joshua, stood before the throne of God and Satan pointed out his filthiness and his uncleanliness. The angel of the Lord had him stripped of all his unrighteousness and a new garment put upon him, a new turban upon his head, and a, cr and a crown upon his head which contained the words holiness to the Lord. When the prodigal son returned to the father, he had a ring put upon his finger, garments put upon him and shoes upon his feet, and a celebration was held for his return. You see, the psalmist tells us that we should worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. And in the Revelation we're told that we are given a robe of righteousness to wear. When we come into the presence of God, when we come under the light of God, we are seen for the kind of person that we are. As the artist moves about the stage, so the spotlight follows him. You can see what he is doing and what part of the stage he is on when he is doing his act. And so it is with us. God's spotlight 
reveals where we stand before him, how we are standing before him, and where we are upon the stage of life. The spotlight identifies us. It's there to our glory or it's there to our shame. Sometimes, you know, we can be so full of self. Sometimes we can be so dressed in pride and arrogance that we are not in the centre of the spotlight, but we're on the fringe of it. We're in the shadows, in the twilight. We're not really in the centre of God's will, or even though we may think that we are. <clears throat> People may say how brilliant we are, how good we are. Aren't we so generous? And we've got such a nice nature. And yet the spotlight of God shows us up for what we really are. Instead of being in the centre of his will, we're on the fringes in the twilight zone. As believers, we need to be in the centre of God's light, in the centre of his will, clothed and covered in his holiness and in his righteousness. You see, it is at that point that we begin to be able to serve God. Because it shows us up for what we are and we're seen for the kind of person that we are. Then we can begin to understand who God is and who we are. The light of God shows up our faults and our weaknesses. And that is seen to all those who are in darkness, to the demons and to the Satan himself. So that even Satan and his demons will want to attack, will want to put us under pressure, will want to try to, as it were, exploit our weaknesses. And so we become in, enthroned in a battle. We become in a situation where we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have this battle upon our hands because we are illuminated by the light of God. We are seen by all who are around us. Just like the actor upon the stage, our very actions can be seen because of the light that's shining upon us. And within that light, the psalmist reminds us, we see light. We begin to see the light that God wants us to know and to understand. He shows us what we are and how we need to change. He shows us what we should be and what we are. He reveals unto us what we must become. The light of God illuminates us so that we are able to come into a process of change, a process of development, a process of realization. The light of God is that which explains to us what's around us. The light of God is that which shows us the reality of what is around us. The light of God is that which marks out the good from the bad. It reminds us, it shows us, it shines up, even the darkness. For before the presence of God there is no darkness. Nothing is hid from God. And what we have here is this understanding that light shines upon us. It shows us what is in darkness. It shows us what is in light. It makes us very much aware of the fact that Satan is around us. That we have this authority over him. That we have this control, as it were, to be able to defeat the opposition, to overcome all the enemy. <coughs> the thing is that the light of God is that which gives us the strength, the insight and the power. Now my friends, what we need to understand is this. If we examine ourselves before God, we shall not be judged. So, are we walking in God's light? Is this our experience? Is this the fellowshipping that we're having, one with another, in God's life? It's up to you and I to sort this out for ourselves. 
May the Lord indeed help us to understand His Word more clearly.